New, how New York City used to work is if you, whenever you became the club king, you got a job. And you've witnessed it, Clue, Club King got a job. You know, he's doing the club's tapes. Self. DJ Self, Club King gets a job. You know, it kind of still works like that if you can command all the clubs. So I was the guy of the moment that year when they were looking for 93, 94, I was the man of the moment. So I got that, that chance, mm -hmm. right? So we're one night, 12 o'clock, There's a club, and this is what I'm, this this goes back to. Uh, a lot of people think opportunity is attached to a dollar. If anybody tells you that they're lying to you, that's not the way nothing works. From 12 to 2, the owner of the tunnel, before I even met him, he had a club called the Palladium. Is that where NYU is at now? Yep. So you got familiar with NYU and in City, 14th Street, that was a club, Palladium, held 3,000 people. That club had a Friday night, they're doing 3,000. Bring it. I go to them, I say, hey, can I play here? They said, you'll never play here. You used to play at that club home base. You're not bringing that nasty crowd into our club. I had the sales guy call, him, call her, the lady. Mm -hmm. Well, I became very good friends, which is very nice. But at the time, they told me no. They didn't even ask how much I wanted. The salesperson, I said, tell him I'll come for free. They said, tell him he could come down. I said, what time can I play? <laughs> tell him 3.15. Nigga, the club's over at four. <laughs> no problem. Give me that 3.15 slot. Okay, you want action? I'm going to give you action tonight. I, I remember the records to this day. I played 900 number, Wu-Tang, Protect Your Neck. I played uh, Run DMC, Peter Piper, lifted that motherfucker off the ground. <laughs> Place going nuts. The lady's not even being nice to me. They don't even offer me nothing to drink. <laughs> I'm here for free. So they don't thank me nothing. I go back to work. I call the, the sales guy. Yo, you think? She said, tell him he can come down here again if he wants for free. We might start paying him in a month. What time can he get on? Three. No problem. I'm going to take this three. Killing him again. I'm killing him for two months. Mind you, the name of the night is called Hex's House. The guy Hex Hector was the biggest remixer at the time. Have anybody familiar with CNC Music Factory? Yeah. Yeah. Like this is, they were a very big group. One guy died, yeah. um, but it was a huge group. So the guy who did the mixes and he was the DJ for them, it was his house. He's packing it. His name was across the, the, the big, what is that? Marquee. The marquee, <laughs> big on the marquee. They didn't even mention me. I started coming on at three. Come on, with them. Exactly. Okay. He start ringing this off. You think he could come in two? No problem. How much you want to pay him? Two fifty. No problem. I'm gonna come down here. I came down at two fifty. You think he can come at one? The kids want to see him earlier. No doubt. But we're going to change the front of that marquee. We're going to do things a little different. What y'all thinking? No problem. They got rid of him the next week. But I earned it. I had to show that you can see. I'm going to tell you something about life. People always bank on you want the money. So if you want the money, they go, just don't give him the money. He'll never get the opportunity to even get up against me. Nah. I'll come down here for free. What y'all thinking? If I'm whack, send me home. No problem. But, but even to get to that point, now, this is how life works. This guy owns the tunnel. But I'm only playing on Fridays. And I think Angie starts hosting it. The guy who owns the Palladium owns the tunnel. The guy who owns the tunnel, the guy who owned Palladium owned the tunnel, he owned this club called USA, and he owned the Coca Cola Limelight. I don't know all of this, none of this, when I come in the building. That's not Peter Gage. It's Peter Gage. Okay. So, 
He keeps saying, you know, Sunday, it was, see, on Sunday night in New York City, first of all, uh, is, is everybody in here 25 and under? 25 and under or, or, or over? Everybody's 25 and under. Okay, so then, you see how you can, you guys now, today, you can go party any way you want to party. You can party in Manhattan, um, in the city, on a weekend. So, in the 90s and early 2000s, there was no African American party in Manhattan. Only the boroughs. There was no party. So, the I knew if I, no matter what night I got, if it was a Tuesday, a Monday, it's gonna work because the kids haven't been coming downtown. So he, it, Sunday night was um, uh, a gay night in New York at every club. Every club had a gay night, no matter what club it was, and it was packed, it was big. There was a drug at the time. Ecstasy, exactly. Who said that? <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> yeah. At the time it was ecstasy. So you drew, you sold a lot of water when you drove with ecstasy because you needed water for the drug to work. So at the gay nights you charged them and everything. So I understood what that mathematics was. I kept telling them, fam, them kids will buy a lot of champagne in there, man. Do the math. I get the same people amount in there. The champagne bottles and water bottles is a different price. He kept thinking about it. He kept thinking about it. And every time he'd be like, I had a bad weekend. You think? Because Jessica Rosenblum, I had a manager that was uh, key. And she was very good at what she did. And she would relay the information. Finally, he just said, I'm going to try it. And it worked because I knew champagne is gonna cost more than the water. He gonna make bread in here. Now, the tunnel kicked me out once. Them and my manager, I had to make a decision. Them and my manager had an argument. It was about the money. Now, this is, I'm gonna explain to you such an important <coughs> part of business. The first half of my tunnel career we were getting a, a portion of the door. So, the owner wanted to get rid of us. Do the night on his own. No, nah, who said why? No, don't worry about that, you know why? It's good when people show you who they are early. Cool, let me see who you are. No problem. You love money? I was like, okay. We took some time off. He's begging to come back. But him and my manager's not getting along. No problem. I love her, but I overrode her. I took the night. He said, well, how are we gonna do this deal? How are we gonna do it different? I'm gonna take a flat fee. You could keep the rest. I did that for a reason. Because now, this guy used to be at the door Oh, they can't come in. Don't put them in. Shut the door. Right? Now he getting the whole door? Everybody come in. What you shutting the door for? Now he's making it a movie. Now he wants everybody to come in. And I'm like, then if I had 800 people, now I got 1,200. And he wants to get everybody in. No problem. And he's keeping that door. I'm going to get this flat fee because I'm getting a call from every club in the fucking city to work, nigga. That's how I looked at him. That's what I'm gonna do. Because, see, he's operating off greed. I'm operating off something different. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.